Hey, what's up guys? Michael Kobus here with Texas Duck Outfitters and today I want to be going over the swoosh or the J-hook. So, for right now, we're out on the lake for this demonstration and the wind is coming from my left to my right, which would be from your right to your left. And so, we're going to be going over uh, feeder butt placement, we're going to be going over full body placement, uh, the landing strip, the backdrop, the landing zone, and diver decoys. So to start off, you use a J-hook when you have a crosswind. So the camera's looking at me right now, this is where the blind would be, and particularly, you would wanna have it about 20 yards out from the blind, your landing strip to your backdrop. So you have your landing zone about 25, 30 yards out, which is about an average shot. And you know, you have the wind coming from either left to right or right to left, so that way the ducks funnel down the landing zone into the backdrop, with their breasts up, you're gonna get a cross, you're gonna get a side shot on them, but they're still opened up enough to where you can drop them in one shot. So let's get in. All right, guys. So with the feeder butts on this spread, you either want them to be at the very end of the landing zone, close up to the shore, because right now the way that the ducks are gonna be coming in, the wind's coming from my left again, coming towards the right. So the ducks are gonna swoop in like so and come right down here. So you want your feeder butts tucked up against the shore, out of the way, where there's vegetation. You can either have them here at the end, or you can have them on the inside of the, of the uh, runway. And then you want your surface feeders, you can have your surface feeders kind of like at the tail end of the runway, but not connected. You want them in a little tighter still. And again, for the purpose of this video, you have to understand that your landing zone is going to be 20 yards off the bank. So right now, it's a little skewed in your perspective, but you know you push this out, you keep the surface feeders tucked in, and then you want your full bodies. You want your full bodies either kind of with the feeder butts, or maybe tucked up off the bank a little more for this. For this scenario, we have two feeding full bodies, so it simulates ducks standing up in the water, munching on the vegetation. All right, guys, so right now we're gonna talk about dive replacement. And again, for the purpose of the video, we've scaled down the decoys a little bit. Typically, we'd have about a dozen divers out here. And what you wanna do with your diver decoys in this situation, you wanna isolate them, all right? Whether it's early season or late season, you want your divers isolated. They're going to be kind of around the bat, the mass of the dabblers, but they're going to be in a little bit deeper water by themselves. And you're going to see your redheads, your canvas backs, your bluebills, your scop, and the majority of other divers go right into those decoys. So you want them either in front of the backdrop, which is right there, isolated by themselves maybe out a few more yards because if you think about it in the blinds right down the bank to my right right here you're still getting a 35 yard shot on these birds and they're coming across like so so you're gonna have time to pull up and aim and get a good shot placement on a duck now now we're gonna move into the back all right guys so the backdrop is called the backdrop because it's meant to stop the ducks so this is where you want to have the bulk of your spread all right, so you want your mallards, your widge, a few widgeons, some teal. Like you want a good variety up here. And preferably throw all of your teal in here because they're gonna stick with the majority of the mallards. They're gonna go towards the bigger mass of ducks. And then with your pintail, you're gonna want your pintail out a little farther off the backdrop and isolated slightly. You know, for the purpose of this video, we have them tucked in so the backdrop's a little bigger, but most times, pintail are going to be around the majority of the ducks, kind of like the divers are, but in a little tighter. So you would have your, you know, if this was the edge right here of my backdrop, let's say, I'd have these four uh, pintail pushed out about five feet. Because pintail are going to land more towards the open water. They're going to come in real high and slow and then drop down right into the middle of the open water. So now we're going to get into the landing strip. All right, guys, so right here, you can see we have the landing strip. So how you want your decoys, you want them up, you want them staggered. You don't want them just in a straight line. You want them staggered a little bit, kind of like they're just floating in a line. 
you know they're they're ready to take off whenever if they need to but for right now they're just kind of chilling so this is where you can have some mallards you can have a few gadwall in here some widgeon you know kind of mix up the ducks you know like i said you want the majority in your backdrop but the landing strip is designed just to guide the ducks down the runway you know just guide them right on in rest wings out like they're stopping they're hitting that wall at the backdrop so now we're going to move into the landing zone all right guys so this is the landing zone or the runway all right so the reason why you have your landing strip towards the inside of you is especially during early season ducks aren't going to be timid the way the wind's coming from my back to the front right now how i'm facing they're going to circle out to my right and open up and come right down this runway so like i said on the landing strip part it guides them to the backstop. They stop right here. They're opening up. They're slow. They're just about to hit the water. And from the blind, you get a really good crossbody shot on them. And it's and they're slow enough and steady enough to where you could get a good one shot kill on a bird. And they're not gonna most of the time early season they're not gonna land out in the middle because they're not shy yet. Now late season, however, you want to flip this. So right now, I have the landing zone facing the blind, or closest to the blind. Late season, I wanna drag it out and I wanna flip it to where you have your landing zone kinda of out towards the middle so it guides them to an inside shot. Now you have to be careful with this because you could shoot your decoys. So you're taking a little bit faster shot at the bird and when they are committing, they run, they come right down this runway, they hit this backdrop and you got them. All right, guys, so two quick things that I forgot to hit on was, number one, the minimum amount of decoys that you need to throw this J-hook is going to be one and a half to two dozen, mainly because you really need a sufficient number of decoys in the backdrop, and your runway can vary, vary from about, like, you know, eight birds to, you know, 20 if you really wanted to. You know, that's if you're throwing, like, a five dozen J spread J-hook, which you can do. Another thing is, is that when you have high volumes of wind and a, like a strong wind coming across, you want all your decoys clipped facing front or facing into the wind. Because what that simulates is they're ready to take off if they have to. And that's how you're gonna see ducks out on the main bodies of water. Now, when you have a slight breeze and you know, you're gonna be throwing a pulsator and a jerk rig and stuff to add movement into your spread, you can have them you know half and half facing different ways because they're going to look more relaxed thank you so much for watching the video make sure to check out our other decoy videos that we got make sure to leave a comment like the video and subscribe to our channel we appreciate the support and we hope to see you back Cobus. all right what's up youtube so Welcome to our channel. We're <laughs> What's up? What are you laughing at? You just mind blowing. I oh, did. Man. I did. I, I hit a wall. Dude, that happens sometimes. It happens to the best of us. I'm definitely not the best. 